What's up you guys, Rex here. So when should you apply to medical school? Should you be pre-writing secondaries? When is too late to take your MCAT? I hope to be answering all of those questions in this video. Real quick, I'll be using the chapters feature, so feel free to hop around to whatever part of the video is most relevant to you. And this video will specifically be covering the AMCAS application, which is the application that covers most MD schools in the United States, pretty much with the exception of a couple schools in Texas. Now, first off, some important dates we need to have in our head. First is when you actually can start filling out your primary AMCAS application. Typically, this is very early May. So this year, 2021, that is May 3rd. And then we care about the first date you actually can click submit on that application. Typically, that is very late May or potentially very early June, depending on the year. This year, that's May 27th, 2021. And then once you actually submit it, you have to wait until AMCAS verifies your application and actually sends it off to schools. Now, the first date AMCAS is able to do this is usually late June, so about a month after you first can submit it. This year, that falls on June 25th. Now, if you are applying, after that June 25th, it depends just how long it takes AMCAS at that time of the year to verify your application for them to actually send it off to schools. They warn that this can take up to six weeks during sort of that peak season in the middle of the summer. It might take shorter, it might take longer, not guaranteed, but we really care about when the schools receive the primary application more than when you actually click submit on it. The next thing we care about is when schools actually can start looking at your application and fully reviewing it. And so this matters for what is the last piece of the puzzle that completes your application for the school to get. For a lot of people, this will be when they actually complete their secondaries and send that off to the school. So after you submit your primary, the school receives the primary, they will send you a secondary application, which is some additional essays, and you have to send those back to the school. For many people, that is the last piece of the puzzle. Other last pieces of the puzzle can be standardized tests. The big one is obviously the MCAT, but it also could be CASPER exam as that's becoming more common. And I'm sure years from now, if you're watching this video, there might be more standardized tests. They just keep piling on poor pre-med students. Additionally, the last piece of the puzzle could be your letters of evaluation, depending on how long it takes your letter writers to actually submit it. That might be the last thing schools are waiting on in order to look at your application. And lastly, theoretically, it really could be your primary application being verified that is sort of the last piece of the puzzle. It won't actually be, but you could have your MCAT score already in, you could have your letters all ready to go and submitted by your letter writers, and you could have pre-written all of your secondaries. And so sort of the last date you care about is when your primary gets verified, such that as soon as the schools just send you your secondaries, they're already done, boom, send it back. So maybe what in some cases is determining when schools actually start looking at your application could be your primary application. But whatever that piece is, it's that last piece of the puzzle that we actually really care about when it comes to when are you applied to medical school. That is when schools start putting it on the desk pile of some admissions committee member to determine if you will be invited for an interview or not. Now, my two general rules to consider when we're talking about when should you apply is rule number one is applying when you have the best application possible is the best time to apply. Rule number two is generally earlier is better. Now, you want to balance those two that you want to have the best application possible and you want to apply early. Obviously, both are ideal, but if applying super early might detriment the quality of your application, it's probably better to wait a little bit. Obviously, up to a certain point, if you're applying too late, that may disadvantage you more than the little bit of improvement you could add to your application by taking an extra three months to fill it out, write your secondaries more thoroughly, something like that. So now I want to go through a couple different scenarios of what this timeline could look like for different people. So first is like the idealized scenario. This is someone that sort of already has their MCAT out of the way. So that is not something that's going to be their last piece of the puzzle. They already have asked for their letters of recommendation. Their letter writers are on top of things. So that's not the last piece of the puzzle. And so all that matters is when they submit their primary and submit their secondaries. In this case, I would recommend to try to apply as early as possible such that you are submitting your application, maybe not on the first day possible on like May 27th or May 30th, but try to shoot for within that first maybe week or two so that maybe by like June 10th would be a good goal to get that primary application in such that you might have your application verified 
on that earliest day possible. In my case, I applied on June 9th and I was fortunate to have my application verified on the first date possible, even though I didn't submit my end on the first date possible. Then once you actually have submitted this primary application, you're gonna have about a month until schools start sending you your secondaries. Since you already have the MCAT out of the way in this hypothetical scenario, I think it would be advantageous to start pre-writing some of your secondaries and just look up, you can Google secondary prompts for medical school. They're pretty much all available. Some of them will change from year to year, but you're gonna be able to, for the most part, trust that they will be similar such that you can pre-write most of them and maybe you have to do slight tweaks here and there for sure, but it is advantageous and an efficient use of your time since you have nothing better to do. So a good goal that some people say is to make sure you submit your secondaries within two weeks of receiving them. I think that's admirable. It's not really realistic for everyone. If you can do that, awesome. I think maybe a, a better goal would be at least within a month such that, all right, you submit your application early June, then schools get the application at the end of June, and then maybe by the end of July, you are completely done, fully applied to medical school, all your secondaries submitted. That would be like an idealized scenario that maybe fits some people, maybe doesn't. That's just an ideal scenario. That doesn't have to be you. Another pretty common scenario might be that, all right, so you already were really on top of things with your MCAT, got that out of the way, but now this last semester, you need to really be studying hard to make sure you get that really great GPA and maybe boost your GPA that little bit, show that upward trend, such that you don't have time during the semester to be writing your great personal statement and write all of your activity sections and pre-writing secondaries and all this stuff. In that case, I think it is okay. Maybe school gets out on May 15th to take a month such that you submit your primary application sort of mid to late June. I think a good goal in this scenario would be to have it submitted by the end of June such that schools get it by the end of July. And again, in this scenario, if after you submit your primary application, you have nothing better to do besides pre-write your secondaries, you can still be basically just on track as someone who submitted their primary application on May 22nd if you have a turnaround time on your secondaries of like three days since you pre-wrote those secondaries. Now, obviously that's not required. I think it's perfectly reasonable to have a deadline for yourself of like end of August, perhaps something like that. And I might put like a hard deadline of like end of September. And so this is where it's really hard to say. I haven't seen great quantitative data on how applying earlier actually impacts your chances. I get the impression that this is something that people use in the like pre-med advising world as sort of like an excuse to explain why some applicant maybe didn't get in anywhere. They say, oh, well, you just didn't apply early enough. And I, I think that's true, but I, I know of a lot of people that had very normal applications that maybe applied in like late October, right around Halloween, and still got accepted to like a great MD school. And so it's obviously earlier is better, but quality matters. And so if you have time over the summer, I don't think there's much reason to be spending more than a month to be writing your primary application and writing your secondaries such that I think by like end of August is very realistic and something you should shoot for. But if it ends up being end of September, I think that's okay. And there's no like absolute hard deadline, but at a certain point it gets asymptotic that your, your chances decrease more and more. So Earlier is better. I can't give you a total hard cutoff, but I think a good goal is by the end of August, and especially if you are starting school, it would be really nice if you can have everything finished before you start school so you don't have that extra thing on your plate. So a final very common, very normal scenario is where you sort of have everything in order, but it's you haven't taken your MCAT yet. And so now you have this decision of when do I take my MCAT? I didn't get it out of the way early in the spring and maybe you don't have time during the semester to study. So you finish school early May, May 10th, May 5th, and you're like, all right, when do I take my MCAT? So the first thing to consider is, are you going to submit your primary application before you take your MCAT or not? I would say yes. If you know you're going to be applying to medical school, that application cycle, you should submit your primary application. Now, probably what I would recommend to do is not actually submit your application to all of the schools. You should maybe just do it to like your in-state school. So maybe three schools or something like that. Get it verified. So now it's verified and out of the way. Say you submit it on May 27th. It's all verified, out of the way, don't have to worry about it by the end of June. And then you can have some flexibility in when you take your MCAT, such that maybe you take your MCAT 
June 30th and don't get your score until July 30th. Then on that day when you get your score, you can add all of the schools that you were sort of unsure about. All right, maybe if I'm higher than expected, I'll apply to these schools. If I'm lower than expected, I'll apply to these schools and sort of gauge it based on that. But it's already verified. So as soon as you add those schools, boom, it gets shipped off to those schools. You're ready to receive the secondaries, ready to go from there. So this is where it really comes down to that balance between having the best application that you can have possible and applying earlier. So if you finish school May 15th, you probably shouldn't be just studying for the MCAT in two weeks such that you take the MCAT on June 1st and you can have your secondaries submitted, boom, ready to go by mid-July. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you probably don't wanna be taking your MCAT like August 15th and such that your last piece of the puzzle is your MCAT score getting to schools on September 15th or something like that. That's starting to push it for sure. And so you want to think about how you can manage your time. You will have this one month break after you do all of your hardcore studying for the MCAT. You got your primary in. All right, took the MCAT. We're done with that. I've got a month till my score comes. I can be pre-writing my secondaries or just legitimately writing your secondaries. You will receive secondaries from a lot of schools before you get your MCAT score. I received secondaries from 11 out of 15 schools before I actually had my MCAT score reported to those schools. So a lot of schools will just send it anyway, as long as you had that application in early. Now, granted, these are schools you actually have to send the application off to. So if there's something where you're like, ah, I don't know what my MCAT score will be, and I'm going to change my list depending on it, you want to actually have it in hand, the actual secondary from that school, but you will be able to pre-write it in any case if you're pretty confident you'll be applying to that school anyway. So you can probably try to have a turnaround of like just a couple days after you get that MCAT score. In my case, I received all of my secondaries within like three days after having my MCAT score. So I had my initial 11 schools that they sent it before my MCAT score, and then an additional three actually that sent it within two days afterwards. Carl, Illinois thought my MCAT score was below 498, so they had a problem and initially rejected me. But I sent them an email saying, actually, no, that was not my MCAT score. You should check again. And they checked again, and I got secondary. But that's a different story for another time. So considering all of that and considering that balance and time management, maybe like eight weeks for studying for the MCAT, six weeks, 10 weeks, something in that ballpark is reasonable. So that would put you at taking your MCAT around June 30th. And so if you take your MCAT June 30th, you can turn around and have your score sent to schools by July 30th. And if you had pre-written your secondaries, boom, you've got all of your applications, secondaries and all submitted by like the first week of August, which doesn't really put you behind at all. The only thing you missed out on was maybe retaking your MCAT as an option, but you already know you're applying this cycle. You're going to take whatever you get and you're going with it and you can adjust your school list depending on that MCAT score. So I think that's a perfectly fine scenario if that's where you find yourself in. All right, and then real quick, let me just go through my example, my personal story. So I already have a video where I go through my entire application. I'll link that down below, probably have a card up there or something like that, but that goes through everything. But real quick, I submitted my primary application on June 9th, I believe it might've been June 10th and then it was verified on the first date possible, like June 28th, something like that. I took my MCAT on June 15th, and then I got my score back on July 16th. I received most of my primary applications around like July 5th or something like that from 11 out of the 15 schools. A couple more were just like July 17th, 18th, 19th, give or take like that. And then I ended up not being super on top of things. That's one thing I wish I would have done differently is first, I wish I would have waited till I got my MCAT score to decide which additional schools to apply to. I should have done that rather than just initially applying to a wide range of schools. I sort of wasted some money in that case that I don't love my school list. The other thing is I probably should have been a little better about being on top of my secondaries, maybe pre-writing some. I sort of just took a break after my MCAT, which is very reasonable. I was exhausted and needed a break when on vacation, all that kind of stuff. But I actually ended up submitting my secondaries between July 16th was my earliest and September 14th was my latest. And now without going into all of them, sort of the important ones that I actually got interview invites from where I got an interview invite first from Duke, where I got the interview invite on August 27th, and I had submitted my secondary on August 4th. Then I got an interview invite from UNC on August 30th, and I had submitted that primary earlier on July 26th. And then on November 12th, I got an interview invite to Penn State, but earlier than UNC and Duke, I had actually submitted my secondary on July 18th for Penn State. And then I had a couple late interview invites that I had an interview invite from Dartmouth on January 7th. And I was sort of late on submitting that secondary to some extent on August 15th. And then I got an interview invite 
from Johns Hopkins on January 17th for a secondary application that I had submitted on August 14th. And then my super late secondary that I submitted was Carl, Illinois, that I submitted the secondary application on September 14th. And I got a showcase invite. That's basically their interview invite. They're kind of different on December 6th. So you can see there is probably a general trend. I have a sample size of six. I wouldn't look into it too much, but yeah, generally earlier you submit those secondaries and have that last piece of the puzzle, the earlier you might get interview invites, the earlier you might get acceptances and probably helps your chances overall. So final summary, two rules. The best time to submit your application is when you have the best application. Rule number two is earlier is generally better. You wanna balance that quality of your application and, and when you have time to write those secondaries and write that personal statement and study for that MCAT with applying earlier. It's about a balance between there and nobody can answer that exact question for you and your personal situation besides you. Pro tip, don't be afraid to submit your primary application, wait for your MCAT score and then add schools onto it later. That's something that is just can be an efficient use. If it's something where you don't know what your MCAT score is going to be, that might save you money because school list is so, so important. And then lastly, make sure you have a plan. That's sort of the most important thing and consider the time things take. Consider the time it takes to write secondaries. Consider that you will have a month break between when you take your MCAT. Consider maybe you have your MCAT already out of the way. So all you have to focus on is personal statement writing. Just the goal is to have a plan that will decrease your stress and ultimately have the best outcomes possible so that you can succeed in getting into medical school. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, I'd love to hear about them down below. If you want to see more of my content, I'll have a playlist linked over here on the right where I go through a lot of other aspects of the application cycle. If you want to catch my uploads as they come out, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, and as always, like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video, and until next time, don't be ordinary, go be great. Mm -hmm.